Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about fire. So we're going to talk about a quick and easy way to paint fire. Um, it's uh, Fire is something I find can often easily look very fake. But it's actually something that has a great cheat and it's pretty easy to paint. So here I have the uh, like the head of a fire phoenix, uh, which seems like an appropriate thing one would want to put fire on. You'll notice right away that I've reverse zenithold it. It actually already almost looks like fire, although it looks a little less so in reality. Um, but all I did was base coat this in a bone color primer, and then at an upward angle like this, I shot it with some Vallejo Light Rust, okay? Um, I love Vallejo Light Rust for undershading fire. As you can see, when you put it over ivory, it actually takes on this wonderful orange tone. So our undershading is already ready to go, okay? And what we're gonna do now is we've got some paints here. We've got some Vallejo Game Ink Yellow. We've got some Vallejo Model Air Orange Rust. Uh, we have some War Colors Red Glaze, and we have some Whole Red. Uh, so, the first thing we're going to do, I've already got a little bit of the yellow ink on my palette here, and I'm going to get into that, and I'm just going to go a little nuts, because what I'm going to do is just run that yellow ink over everything. I'm going to go over top of the orange, over everything. Now, the reason I reverse highlighted this, basically a reverse zenithal, is because... In this case, I want the deepest parts down here where I would normally be, uh, where I would normally have it be a very light color, or sorry, be a very dark color if I were zenithaling it. I want it to be very light, right? So instead, I started with a very light base primer, i.e., the bone, and then I went into the high angle darker color. So it's just a reverse zenithal. Now, if you don't happen to have an airbrush and you can't easily achieve what I did here, don't worry. It's just fine. You can go use any old rattle can bone primer. There are several out there that are available in the market. You can use GW or Army Painter or whatever, and then just take some of that light rust, that same color that I was describing, and you can just dry brush that onto the model and it'll give you the same effect. You want a nice light dry brush and you're good to go. Uh, in this case I just did it with the airbrush since it was fast and easy. Now already we have a pretty fiery look just by putting that orange, that yellow over top. Like depending on how hot we wanted to go with that fire, hey maybe we stop right there but we can probably of course go a little farther. So that's where we're going to get into this stuff right here. So let me put these on my palette while I have a quick discussion about fire. The obvious point we want to make with fire, oh my goodness, is that it goes from uh, hot at the center, yellow or whatever, or near white, out to something darker. Now, one of the most common problems I see people have when they do fire is they start with something very yellow at the base, and then they take it to an orange for a short amount of distance, and then they go into red. Something like this, like a Ferrari red. You know, they do that very fast. Like a red car red. The problem is fire is never actually that color red, okay? I mean, we're already painting something that's not real. By that, what I mean, not that fire isn't real. I just mean like fire being in a stable place like that isn't something we normally see. Um, but it doesn't really exist in that kind of like that red, that warm red color. Fire, when it exists, tends to be, uh, when we see it, it tends to be white, the hottest points, yellow, and mostly orange. When it gets into the reds, it actually gets into very deep reds because it's charcoaling. It's, that's, that's the sort of issue here. So what I'm going to do is I took some of that orange, and I'm just going to start picking out very carefully. My ink isn't even dry. But I'm just going to kind of run it up all my little high points here. Now, if you were really in a hurry, you want to do this a little quicker. Hey, guess what? Remember our old friend dry brushing? 
well, he is on your side here. Because, once again, you could just go in and dry brush all of this, and that would be just fine. In this case, though, what I'm doing, and the reason I use the orange rust is because if you look at this, it's a nice sort of desaturated orange. It's not hyper bright, and that's what I want. Again, I see a lot of orange fire where people go for this, like, cartoony orange, and it just, it just rings so hollow and so fake. We want to leave that yellow down in the recesses. We want to leave that heat down there, right? Okay. All right, now, I know I just talked about that red. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of that red. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this red glaze here, okay? And I'm gonna mix it with some of the orange. So what I get is a nice Oops, sorry. What I get is a nice red-orange that looks like that. Sorry, I know my palette's very messy. Test it on the back of my hand. There we go. Okay. Now, with a little bit less area than what I covered before, I'm just going to come in here and very lightly touch some of these tips. Now, I'm going to actually cover this all up in just a moment. But what I'm trying to do, I'm actually going very, very light on just a few of the tips here. And the reason I'm going to do this right now is because when I come back in with my next color, I want there, some of it to be undershaded in red, because that's going to help. Because the next layer that we do is going to be very, very transparent. So, you can see there, we've got a nice, we've got some nice red tips. Okay, our final color is whole red. Now, my whole red is out here on the palette. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna take it and thin it way down here on my palette, okay? So I get a nice glaze. Now, I'm not working with my wet palette for this because I'm going quickly. If I was uh, doing this, you know, on a big project, I'd certainly keep a wet palette. Okay, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up over these same areas, but actually a little more. So normally when we go into a darker color like this, we go less than what we did before, but here I'm actually gonna do just a little bit more because I wanna bring some of that orange into the whole red and some of that undercoated red I had before. So what I get is a hidden little transition there that I'm getting for free, okay? Now, this whole red is a very strong, dark color, but that's what we want. We want it to be a nice, powerful char on the end of our flames, okay? So we get something like that. Now, again, you can choose to stop anywhere in here that you think looks good, by the by. Like, if you wanted to stop after that initial layer of yellow there you go then consider this tutorial basically you prime and bone you dry brush or zenithal and light rust and then a yellow ink and bing bang boom you've got a hot fire but what we're going to do here instead now is we're going to go back in and we're going to even all this out so we're going to take some of that yellow ink over here on my palette and i'm going to go into my orange i'm going to thin it with the yellow ink okay Okay, now let's give that a test. Now what I'm gonna do is go over everything again, but start really, really low on the fire. Still not all the way down. Still wanna leave some of that nice hot, uh, some of that nice hot yellow down there. But we wanna back out some of that yellow. Cause in the end, we don't want them to be too yellow. Too much yellow looks kind of fake with flame. Flame should feel mostly somewhere in the orange, orange, yellow spectrum. And there's a, there is a spectrum there. That's why I say I stay away from like cartoony oranges for this because I think it overpowers it very quickly. And instead I go for the more sort of desaturated yellow. 
I just find I like the effect better, but you can use whatever orange you like. Nothing, as always, nothing about these colors that I'm doing is sacred in any way. Okay. You notice I'm just going over all of it, just picking out most of the length of the tendrils. And there we go. Now what I've got is something that looks nice and fiery. Now, if that's still too much yellow for you, if that's still too bright, you can just keep pushing this orange down. Maybe go back into the true orange. I will say on the camera, this appears a little bit brighter than it does in reality. But that's always the case with yellow oranges in recording. But you can just keep pushing this yellow as long as you, or sorry, the orange, as long as you leave the yellow in your deepest recesses, you're good. Now, what you never want to do is wash this with an orange, okay? It's okay to dry brush with these darker colors. Do not wash. Shading, washing, like that process, that is about getting darker colors into the recesses. That is the opposite of what we are trying to accomplish here, okay? We are trying to keep the recesses light and paint the, the tips dark. And this is a quick way to achieve that, okay? And you can keep mixing these back and forth. I could keep grabbing some of my red and mix it with my orange or a little bit more of my whole red if I wanna get some of that going again. I can just keep pushing the spectrum around until I'm happy with my balance. Again, you can stop wherever you feel comfortable with, but the point of it is is that you want some variance. Don't, don't highlight every single tip the same distance. Have some that are just right at the top, have some that go way down. Again, if it's a little more random, it's gonna feel more natural. As with everything in nature, nature is very random. So the more you're random when you're painting stuff like this, the more you kind of make it a little slapdash, the more it'll actually feel authentic. Okay, and there we go. We got a nice fiery bird. So just that easy and quick. Uh, so you can see there he was originally with just the yellow ink, we preserved that. You can see he looks like a very hot, light colored fire. And if we turn him around, now we see we've got the full spectrum there, okay? And depending on how we look at him, it kind of alters because the flame looks hotter if I go at different angles. All right, so to review, bone color base primer, uh, light rust, either angled zenithal or uh, just a nice dry brush will also do you. A yellow ink over everything to get a nice smooth transition okay and then basically we walk after that yellow ink we go from an orange to a sort of a red to a very deep brown black red like I've used whole red here uh, but you can use whatever you want okay uh, and then we go up the colors to the darkest toward the tip and then we walk back down with some final glazes to just smooth it out as always, you can take this as far as you want. I could keep, if I was really doing some serious piece, I would just repeat this entire process about three times. But something like this is gonna make a great looking phoenix. You can see how, the, how much that pops. If you're just doing a little flame of like a character holding a torch, this quick process, you'll be done in 10 minutes and you'll have a, a very nice looking flame that'll look nice and realistic. And by the way, you can just sort of cover up the model itself and then prime that part of the model, like the torch or the magic flame in, in the caster's hand, or whatever it is, differently than the rest of the model. I keep a little saran wrap at my de at my uh, my airbrush booth, so if I need to wrap a model and prime something different, I can just throw the saran wrap around, psh, spray, done. So there you go, little bonus tip. There you go, that's a quick and easy way to paint fire. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope this is useful. If it was useful for you, give it a like. That's always appreciated. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. As always, if you know somebody who is painting fire, don't be afraid to share this video with them. Sharing is always the nicest thing you can do. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching.
and we'll see you next time. Thank you.